action that happened between Joshua Rohrer and the Gastonia Police Department. Here's the story, and at the end, I've got a couple of updates. Today's video is coming to us out of Gaston County with the Gastonia Police Department. It was brought to my attention by a friend who pointed me to Spike Cohen's post. The original post is from almost a month ago, but there is an update and a homeless veteran, Joshua Rohrer, needs as much of our help as he can get right now after being brutalized and having his service dog tased by Gastonia police. All the pertinent contact information will be in the description and the pinned comment below. Reading directly from Spike Cohen's post on Facebook, in front of the Gaston County Courthouse, there's a monument that says, in honor of all veterans. But at least one Gastonia veteran has been seriously dishonored by his local government. You may have already heard the story. Joshua Rohrer is a homeless army veteran who served from 2002 to 2008 and did one tour overseas. He suffers from PTSD, which he is actively getting help from the VA, but he requires a service dog to function in society. By all accounts, Joshua is a nice and friendly man and hasn't bothered anyone. Back in October, a woman called 911 to report that Joshua was, quote, using his dog to get money, to make people feel sorry for him. Joshua said later that he never begs for food or money, that he only walks down the walkways with his service dog Sunshine and talks with folks as they pass by. This is, of course, perfectly legal, and he has every right to walk on public property with his dog. When a Gastonia police officer arrived, Joshua was told that he was breaking the law, which he denied. The officer requested backup and insisted that Joshua show a state ID. Joshua doesn't have one, but he was pulling out a VA card when the officer slammed him up against the police cruiser, cuffed him, and arrested him for solicitation and resisting arrest. The officer then shot Sunshine, the service dog, with a taser as bystanders yelled for the officer to leave her alone. Sunshine ran to a nearby store with one of the taser prongs still attached to her. Joshua asked someone to please retrieve Sunshine, and the Gastonia officers responded by laughing at him and shoving him into the cruiser. While Joshua was in police custody, Sunshine was retrieved and released to one of Joshua's friends, where she ended up running away and was hit by a car and killed. Joshua believes she was scared and looking for him. Officers claim that Joshua resisted arrest and Sunshine bit the officer who tased her. Joshua and at least four eyewitnesses say that he didn't resist and Sunshine was several feet away and facing away from the officer when she was tased. There's a simple way to solve this case of conflicting stories. Release the body cam footage. But Gastonia police are refusing to do that. Joshua has seen nearly two hours of the footage himself, and he says it shows that neither he nor Sunshine did anything wrong, and that the officer brutalized both of them. Joshua and local media have even petitioned for the footage to be released to the public, but that request was denied by a judge. Just ask Pastor Moses Colbert. He's been operating the Faith, Hope, and Love Enrichment Community Center since 2019. Up until last month, Pastor Moses has provided meals, showers, and shelter to those in need. He'd serve around 40 people each night, folks from all walks of life, which was a tremendous help because there was no other shelters in Gastonia. But in January, the Gastonia city government forced the pastor to shut down his center and stop helping the poor. In their statement, they said that, quote, the church was built as a church and can only be used for that purpose, which does not include overnight housing. And due to city zoning regulations, shelters are not permitted by right in the city. The city also stated, quote, The city of Gastonia is aware of the issues related to homelessness. We are working diligently with our faith-based communities, nonprofit organizations, and Gaston County and other municipalities to reduce and ultimately end homelessness. This will take everyone working together to find solutions. Apparently, their idea of, quote, working diligently to find solutions means shutting down the only homeless shelter in the city. And of course, back in 2015, Gastonia police broke into the home of a 74-year-old veteran named James Howard Allen for a, quote, wellness check at midnight 
James drew his firearm on the home intruders and was killed immediately. Imagine being an old man who's recovering from surgery and having a group of strangers break into your home in the middle of the night and being killed by them when you try to defend yourself. But this problem goes back even further. From 1987 until at least 1990, Gastonia police had a team of officers called the, quote, Eagle Team, whose mission was to harass Gastonia's homeless population. They used CB radios so they could communicate and plan their violent crimes without using police channels. The Eagle Team would take cooling oil, coffee, and even urine and douse the homeless in these liquids. They would often brutally assault their victims as well, which they referred to as, quote, taking them for a ride on Space Mountain. They found their violent behavior to be so funny that they even had t-shirts printed up that said, quote, Space Mountain Boys for their bowling league. One of their victims, a man named Norman Ben Hanna, talked about being assaulted to a friend of his. The friend, a bail bondsman named Ronnie Biddix, called the police in ACLU, who had represented Hanna and other victims in a lawsuit. Starting over with a little nudge from his talk. Later, criminal charges were filed against the Eagle team. Sadly, Ben would never see justice prevail. On December of 1990, he was found shot to death at his mother's home in an alleged suicide. Authorities claim that Ben pointed a 22 caliber rifle at his chest and pulled the trigger with a stick. Even though Norman was illiterate, he apparently learned to write just in time to pen a suicide note. As a result of the witness's death, charges against former Eagle Team officers David Neil McKinney and Timothy Andrew Bass were dropped. Norman's friend, Ronnie, was also intimidated by Gastonia police, who would drive by his work and make a slicing motion with their fingers across their throats. After Ben died, Ronnie was told that he would be next. He eventually had a nervous breakdown and had to retire. Thankfully, three of the officers pleaded guilty to their various crimes, and all seven of them either resigned or were fired. But it appears that the legacy of the, quote, Eagle Team continues to live on within the department. Now, there is an update to this, but reading from the original post, it says, and that is why this Tuesday, March 1st, yes, that date is passed, <laughs> I will join Joshua, Pastor Moses, members of the Libertarian Party of Gaston County, and many other members of this community as we go to the next Gastonia City Council meeting and call for the body cam footage of Joshua's arrest to be released for Pastor Moses to be given a feasible and affordable way to reopen the center and for the Gastonia city government to start respecting the lives and rights of the homeless and veteran communities. As of today, April 4th, 2022, the body cam footage still hasn't been released. Spike Cohen posted 16 hours ago saying that they're going back to the city meeting again tomorrow, April 5th, 2022. If the Gastonia Police Department's version of their story is true, why not just release the body camera and prove it to the public? If the Gastonia Police Department's narrative is untrue, why not release the body cam footage and get rid of the dirty cop that puts all the other cops in danger? You see, private individuals commit crimes all the time, but there's a reason that I focus all of my time and energy on police crimes. Private individuals are held accountable for their crimes, but police are rarely held accountable through the same justice system. And time and time again, I see instances like this, where the police, politicians, and judges defend each other from being held accountable to the same laws that they hold everyone else accountable to. This body cam footage isn't just being covered up by the cops. It's being covered up by city staff as well, city politicians, and a judge on the county level. Contact information for the police department, city offices, and county offices are in the description and pinned comments below. Come on, guys. Release the footage and exonerate your officer. The individuals responsible for the attack on Joshua Rohrer are Sierra Brooks, pictured on the left, and Maurice Taylor III, pictured on the right. We may never know exactly why two black officers decided to attack an innocent, unarmed white man that day. But we do know why Internal Affairs is trying to sweep it under the rug. You see, Maurice Taylor III is son of Maurice Taylor Jr. And Maurice Taylor Jr. is 
head of internal affairs at the Gastonia Police Department. Imagine having your conduct that day reviewed by your own father to see if you had done anything wrong. And then there's Officer Sierra Brooks making posts on social media stating, Gaston County people in such an uproar about that damn dog getting tased without knowing the facts. But where was this same energy for the Gastonia officers that were attacked a couple of days ago and almost lost their lives? I'll wait. And Sierra's right. We don't know for sure the facts of that case because the department refuses to release the body cam footage. Once again, if you did nothing wrong, then why won't you show us what you did? And she continues to make comments on social media about that damn dog incident, claiming that clearly Joshua was in the wrong. But nothing is clear to anyone because we still haven't seen the footage. So Sierra Brooks, if you're gonna make a claim like that, then why don't you personally show us the footage, proving that Joshua was wrong and you are right. Based on that hat you're wearing, we both know you should be doing the right thing when it comes to police brutality allegations. Or is that movement only about exposing white police that brutalize black people and not black police that brutalize white people? Folks are headed back out to Gastonia to confront the city on this issue again on June 7th, 2022. If you happen to live in the area and you can make it out there, the more support we can get out there for Joshua, the better. Also, if you live in the area and you can get out there and do any cop watching, we'd love to see how these cops act on camera, since we can't seem to get their body cameras. If you're able to do any cop watching out there, send me the video. I may be able to feature it on my channel, sending viewers to you.